Well, Big D back with uh, another edition. No, we're not talking football just yet today, but we will be. Uh, before I bring in today's special guest, please subscribe, by, like, and share the Spunky Spectrum Sports YouTube page. All my content, NFL Draft, Aaron Rodgers, you name it. Also, <laughs> check out the uh, Big D podcast for audio, audio listeners on Spotify and Apple. So, um... Uh, Join my next guest uh, has been here has come here from California. I think she. I think we've done episodes where you've been in Poland, you've been in Spain, and now joining us from Ireland. Yes, Ireland, <laughs> Erica's race walking queen, queen Robin Stevens. So, Robin, how's Ireland? Uh it's good. I've only been here about. 24 hours <laughs> uh but so far I'll be here for nine days uh so far I like it um I get to kind of um, appreciate you know bring out the one percent of Irish that's in my genetics and uh, my mom came out to meet with me because my birthday was yesterday and today I so I picked this spot like this where we're staying in Dublin specifically for the access to the park so I can continue training um easily and access to gyms and you know for strength training and all of that so uninterrupted and there's this there's tons of parks but the park that I went to today was perfectly named Stevens Park my last name Stevens so I was like ah oh, I didn't even realize it <laughs> and as I'm walking there you have to go down Gaston Street and there's all these even in the daylight um there's all these solo artists or small you know like small group musicians just playing live all along the streets that's almost like we're all getting serenaded as I'm walking to training and it's about like a 10 minute walk to get to the park and uh so it's it's really cool it's kind of reminds me of Beale Street in Memphis or uh you know just like some of like our uh, our whole uh music line along the belt line and the, the Mississippi um except for instead of it being only at night it's even in the day and there's all these artists just playing and they have different genres. Uh, there was one person singing Spanish and then some others doing some cranberry covers. And I mean, it's just, and then some with their original work. Uh, so it was really, it's, it's really cool. Like just my first day here was a nice welcome. I was brought up on music. So having my first like full day in a new decade, <laughs> Um, celebrated with music with all these just different solo artists as I walked to this gorgeous park called Stevens Park and uh, it's all like everything's green earlier today it was warmer and it has been really cold in Poland <laughs> so, in Poznan uh, Warsaw like I just came from War the, the race in Warsaw and they had two beautiful perfect spring days like a california spring day um so my my spanish teammates and coach think i was lying about how <laughs> they're like you said it was cold here and it's like these two perfect days and then i get here and the afternoon was lovely i was actually in shorts for the first time in i don't even remember how many months and and then it got cold like my mom and i finished our morning coffee and it started to get a little chilly but it's not near as cold as in Poznan. And it's just, I, I enjoyed a lovely 12K through this gorgeous park, uh, just a few kilometers away from where we're staying. And with all these different live music to, you know, warm up as I warm up for my training. And then as I'm coming home from training, that's <laughs> really cool. <laughs> yeah. Who needs it? Who needs Beats headphones when you've got all the music you need in Dublin? Yeah. Like normally I'm, I'm a custom, I got a custom starting in Spain last year. So I used to not ha always have my earbuds with me. Um, I would train, you know, without them, with or without, it depended. If I was alone on a long walk, I would bring them for like emergency reasons if I needed to make a phone call. But, and that's kind of how I got in the habit of always having my earbuds. And I got these shocks. Um, I, I was introduced to them uh, by Allie. And she, so she sent me a pair and I just love them, but they make it so you can hear what's going on around you while also listening to sound cancellation music because they rest on the bone, the bone. And so normally I have those on. I didn't even need them today. I, I totally forgot 
to wear them and didn't even notice. But in Spain last year, my coach, like one of the other coaches that trains out there, my coach was in Granada that day and our training was in Guadix and we had 25K and that coach was, you know, trying to keep track of all of us, but I'm not his athlete. And he, I got lost and he couldn't find me and I didn't have my phone and I didn't have my earphones and I had nothing on me. So I'm like flagging down these, like I find, like I was in the middle of nowhere because Guadix is in the middle of nowhere and which I love. Um, but I got lost. And fortunately I do speak some Spanish, you know, if there's any country that I'm going to get lost in, I'd rather it be in Spain uh, because I can speak some of the language um you know in South America but I finally like maybe after 5k I ran into some police officers in fact because <laughs> they were wondering why I'm just randomly on this like open road and I asked them where how to get back to the town and I was able to get there but it was raining and it was cold and uh so ever since I always have my phone on me and I always have my earbuds and so that I can make a call without I guess if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I'm not distracting anyone, but it's so I'm not distracting anyone. <laughs> but here, yeah, there's, um, I didn't even realize I didn't have my headphones on because there's just all this music around and just beautiful. Oh, and there's bird. So I know some people don't like seagulls, but there are these seagulls and pigeons everywhere here. And these seagulls are well fed. They're well taken care of. Like they are, they are big. They, they look like barons, like they could be barons of a big estate. Um, and there's one that owns the street right next to me. I, I can tell he owns it. And he, he flies like really low and he's pure white, beautiful color, but they make for awesome photos and great company. Um, like in the park, there was all these people just picnicking in the park and feeding the pigeons and the seagulls and just a lovely atmosphere. Hey, I mean, when I went, to, when I trained on the park in Illinois last July, it was weird because I actually got to hear birds, which, I mean, you don't really hear birds in Florida. I mean, <laughs> it's just, yeah, we, we you made... don't, but you get alligators. <laughs> I mean, you can't hear alligators, they're quiet, but they're super cute. They have great and, smiles. And we get deer. You have deer, which are also quiet. And you have turtles everywhere, which are also quiet. But I mean, not many places have adorable, smiling crocodiles and alligators. And one of my favorite Christmas or Christmas birthday messages I got yesterday was from my my pet. You remember the last time we talked? I was in Florida and I had a quasi pet alligator that lived in the neighborhood and I named him Gabe. And he's this tiny, he looks like a baby and he just has the best smile I've seen on any alligator. So you have that going for you. Unfortunately, you can't hear them though. <laughs> so Robin, how are things going for you race-wise? I mean, I saw you ran a race in uh, Poland, what was it, last week? Oh yeah, no, that was the first week I was arrived. So I, got, I arrived in Poland March 6th. And so I'm I'm out there training with Magali, my Ecuadorian sister and teammate and competitor friend. And so her fiance is Polish and lives in Poznan. And he let me know that there was this 10K race coming up that weekend. And my training hadn't been going all that well for quite a few months now, just because of health issues. And so I thought, you know, when it's not already not going well, might as well have fun. And my coach keeps telling me, Asinta, it's just like, oh, you just got to make sure you're happy. You got to make sure you get your health intact and you're happy. So I hadn't ran a race in so long. And I was all signed up to do CIM in December. And I was super excited because I've been wanting to do CIM for years. I have yet, I have done four 50Ks and three 35 Ks, but I have race walking, but I have yet to run a marathon, which has been my childhood goal since I was like 10. So um, every year I've been looking forward to CIM and I can never do it because of 
the USATF annual meeting or a coach thinks it's going to interfere with at the time when the 50K was an event um, that it was going to interfere with the 50K. And so finally I signed up because it's only a 35K in January and was super excited. It was in December. And then I got, you know, with the whole sports manipulation, you know, the drama going on with the other race swap competitors <laughs> in the USA, uh, I was encouraged to come to the annual meeting, um, the USA track and field annual meeting, which was the same weekend as CIM. So I missed that, which really bummed me out because I was really looking forward to running. So when I got to Poland and he told me about the 10K, I was like, you know what? I have not ran in so long. I just need something to change it up. And so I just signed up and jumped into the race and it was for a good cause. It, it donates money to um, curing some type of like brain disease. And so I just thought, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have some fun and run a 10 K. The only thing is, is I had just arrived there. So I didn't know the area very well. And, um, so I didn't have a bib <laughs> because I couldn't find, I signed up, I paid for everything, but I didn't know where to go to pick up my bib. I went to the wrong place morning of, and I had to wait to the morning of, because the way the payment works is I had to do a wire transfer from America because they wouldn't take my credit card from the way that their system was set up. But then it took like three to five days to verify the payment. So I couldn't pick up my bib till it was verified, which was going to be the day of the race. And so it was all timed, like, oh, everything had to work out perfectly. And so I went to the city square thinking that's where we pick up our bib. And it turned out that the bib was, the start line was actually right across the street from where I had my Airbnb. So it was really, so I had walked about 8K to go get my bib when all I had to do was just walk maybe like a K and a half to get my bib and to the start line. And so before I even started the 10K, it had already done about 6K <laughs> where I was like running, trying to get to my, my bib in, in time for the race. And so I actually ran up opposite as the guns going off for the first, you know, tiered um, corral to start, I arrived right as the gun went off. And then the lady was like, where's your, where's your bib? Where's your bib? And she's talking to me in Polish. And I'm like, nie mom, nie mom. You know, like I don't have, but I paid, <laughs> you know, I paid. See, and so I showed her it. She's like, okay, go, go. And so I just jumped in and ran and, and it was fun. And I needed that. I needed just that change of pace and just that feeling like that, you know, there's no way to feel like just jump into a nation and feel like you're like a local there uh no better way than just to jump into a fun run a local fun run <laughs> in that country or state or wherever you are and then you kind of get to know after that I got to know the, the the city of Poznan on foot because we ran all through Poznan so then I knew where the training routes were I saw how close the river trail is where I do a lot of my training this past month while in Poznan and you know, it's a, it's a good way to get to know a city. <laughs> hey, a lot get, of fun. hey, get this, uh, as someone who runs 5Ks, I mean, you see the medals, you see the medals. Yeah. Up on your, you do what I do at home. I made a curtain out of mine. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I'm flying to uh, Swingfield, Illinois on July 3rd, the running race on July 4th. So I'm thinking, so I'm thinking, Oh boy, I hope I hope my packet's there. I've already signed up for the race. Oh, oh, but you don't have your packet yet? No, no, it's in Illinois. Well, we'll be in Illinois. Well, just make sure you get it. So normally I make sure I get it the day before. Um, but because of the way the payment transaction went through, I had to wait to show proof that I paid so that I could get my bib and then it ended up. Yeah. So just make sure that I mean you're in the same country as your race. So I don't think there's going to be issues. So you can just, um, you know, just when you get there, when do you arrive? Like a couple days before? I arrive uh, the afternoon before my race. I arrived at the July 3rd. The race is July 4th. Yeah. So I think you'll be fine. You just get it when you, as soon as you land or the day of. I, I mean, for those, there's just so many people in the morning for those fun type of fun runs that I just prefer... I usually try to get to a race two days before so that I can figure out where to pick up my bib and just have every and have my fluids and everything ready. 
I mean, you don't really have to worry about fluids for a 5k, but for a 20k and 35, like I just try to have everything in order. So you arrive a day before, find out where you, the pick packet pickup is and get it. That way you don't have to worry in the morning <laughs> and be doing what I'm doing where you're running up to the start line as it's starting. <laughs> All right, Robin. So, um, you know, you know, you can't just do a 5k as a runner or a 20, 35k as a walker. You've got to train. So uh, what's the training for a race walker? Uh, it's, I mean, training or race walk, we get this question a lot. Um, it's the same as running, except where we're race walking it. So any training that a marathon runner is doing, uh, we're doing very similar. It's just instead of running the training, we're race walking it. Um, so we have speed days. At, I mean, we probably have more speed days than a marathon runner because probably more like a 10K, 5K trainer, you know, or runner professional athlete, because, um, as I mentioned in other interviews with you before, like the, our, a race walker uses all the muscles. That's what makes race walking so fascinating is it uses all the muscles that a sprinter and middle distance and a distance athletes using all at the same time. So our turnover is actually as fast as an 800 meter runner, or maybe like a 400 meter runner. And so we do have our, our speed days, I mean, we're like twice a week. And, but then all of our distance and stuff, that's more similar to a marathon runner. Nothing's going to be lower than a 12 K on a typical day. It's going to be 12 to about 22 K for a 20 K walker. And then for like a 35 K, we might go up to like a 30 K every now and then before a race, but there's not really many of those. So, um, and we train one or two times a day for aerobic. And then we also have our anaerobic because like sprinters, um, because like we need that turnover and that push off of our, our toe, um, you know, you're going to get more out of having a strong musculature, you know? So like we have our gym days twice a week doing like isometric and, uh, explosive exercises. So with those involved, so with like the gym exercise, what all the gym exercise do you use? Do you do like weights you do like uh resistance bands what kind do you what kind of workouts? oh all all of them i mean there's something i love about my training with yacinto is it's always changing it's never the same it's never stagnant you know like some coach coaching styles are you just kind of have the same pattern every week and you can kind of predict what you're going to have and that can be helpful sometimes when you're traveling a lot you can you, you kind of know if you can't get in touch with your coach but with him, it just keeps things so fun and um, not ever boring because it's always changing and he's it's it's specific to each athlete and he has all several athletes that he's coaching. So um, for for the strength training, he does a lot of because he knows we travel a lot. So he tries to do things that would be easy for us to do anywhere. Um Sometimes, yeah, we do wait. So I need access to a gym. So that's why when I book stuff, when I'm booking Airbnbs, I, I look for an Airbnb that's close to gym access or already has gym access. So like this Airbnb has a gym in it. And if it doesn't have all the, the equipment that I need, I have a little bag the size of like a briefcase that um, I bring my sled in because we use sled, you know, like when you put a weight and you yeah. So we do sled training. So I bring my own of that because that's one of the things that's not guaranteed at any gym. And then I have my own resistance band that I use a couple of them. So I have a strong one that I got from decathlon and that's going to be more for when we need to do like explosive stuff, but we're on our own so we can like attach it to something and then do like an explosive, uh, whatever, you know, like squats and some race walk technique drills and uh and then I have my other resistant bands for some other things that he might instruct but um and then I have I bring like a weight vest with me because that's not always guaranteed at a gym um so I actually travel with a 13 pound weight vest and when I was traveling to Poland I couldn't fit it in my bag and she was going to overcharge me because it, it it pushed the bag overweight and so I just looked at her and I was like I'll wear it so I was going to wear a 13 pound vest for 18 hours total of traveling. And she just looked at me like I'm crazy. And she's like, you know what? 
don't worry about it. <laughs> we won't charge you extra. <laughs> Just throw it in the bag. But I have that with me as well. Um, so we use weight vest stuff so that when we're doing explosives, we still have that weight resistance. And But we do use, uh, we do need access to gym equipment too. So for like um, bench press and Sometimes it's better. Like I like to do a lot of dumbbell stuff because, you know, one arm is going to be one side of your body is usually stronger than the others anyway. So you want to make sure you're, if you're doing a straight bar, your stronger side will overcompensate for that weaker side and not develop. So I actually really like using dumbbells instead. Um, but traveling, it can be difficult because it's not easy to travel with weights because it adds weight to your baggage. So I look for gyms where um, just in a pinch, I can get access to like a 20 pound dumbbell set because I'm not going to travel with that or a 25 pound dumbbell set, dumbbell or 35 if I'm doing bench press or, you know, stuff like that. I'm not, you know, that it's, you can travel with like maybe 15 pounds, but, you know, with clothes and all that, you can't, it's just not feasible. I can pain in the butt. We don't get, and the bags that we get from USA, Team USA, they're terrible. I hate them. I hope they change it for Paris um, because they're so awkward to train with. All of us keep asking for the smaller ones. They don't give any of the athletes the smaller ones except for throwers because they're meant for their throwing. So the kind that you can fit overhead, we don't get those unless you're a thrower. Uh, so it makes it really hard to travel with um, everything that we need because it can add too much weight even though they're big. <laughs> who, who knew big so, so those are all the things that I'm planning. So it's funny because when you said you wanted to talk about Ireland and I've only been here 24 hours, I was just like, oh shoot, my mom would be the better person if you want to talk about Ireland itself because she's been, this is vacation for her where it's training still for me. So she's doing all this research about with all these things she's going to go see during the day while I'm training. And all I look at when I'm booking places is, is it close to a lot of parks and for like distance and for all my endurance training? And is there a gym? Is there access to a gym? So that just in case the stuff that I bring with me doesn't cover all the bases of whatever Jacinto has assigned for me that week, um, I have that gym access also because it's been cold. So if I don't have room in my Airbnb, I don't want to be outside because it's super cold and so I have that access <laughs> what are what are your favorite and least favorite workouts to do so that's the thing is I used to have favorite and least favorites uh with other coaching styles but you know the coaching style where it's like kind of the same every week with Yacinto um I love all of it like there's not a single day of training or type of training that he gives me um, that I don't like it's it's I love speed work I love distance um, the only time I'm not happy with my training is when I've been sick which has been the last few months I've been having health issues after health issues so it can be kind of a uh, uh, devastating in some ways when you know your body's stronger than it is typically for these certain types of workouts and yet the body's not moving how I'm used to it. So, but that's more to do with my own personal body <laughs> and just getting through the, the various illnesses. But, um, I think we're getting out of that phase and we're slowly getting back. It's going to take some time to regain what I lost, but, um, I, I don't know. I love my favorite days are the long workouts where I can just kind of go, uh, he'll usually throw in, I mean, so we have a lot, so he's a stiffler for technical. So we have a lot of technical days. Those are great because that, um, you can do like a whole 12 to 18 K and not even realize it feels like all you did was a six K because there's all these different technical exercises that he includes in the middle of it. So you might have like a six K and then for two K we're doing technical stuff. And then we have, um, like 500 by 500 pickups in the middle of it. And then we finish with a 3K. So um, it makes it so it's like, there's always, and there's always a little bit of cross training too. Like you might say, okay, I want you on the bike for 20 minutes. And then I want you to go and do um, a hit session. 
and then finish with a, with a jog, you know? So it's, I like it, like all of them, you just find a way to appreciate every single workout type because every type has a purpose and intention for getting you towards the goal that, you know, trying to reach. And, um, so I, I don't know, how, I, I don't have a direct answer for that because there's no workout that I don't like. I, I like all of them because none of them are boring. They all have something to do. And plus with race walk, we have to think about our technique all the time. So it's, it's kind of hard to get bored. Now I used to, uh, have to get, have these repeat 3000s where I would have to do five by 3000s. I used to hate that workout. I hated it. But then by the, I had to do them so often, like every week it would, and this is not with Yacinta's program, it's with a different coach, but um, every week we always had that. And I'd get so envious of other athletes because sometimes they would have repeat 300s. And even though that would be a more difficult workout because they're doing a total of maybe 25 to 40 300s with very short rest. I was like, I want to do that because it changes up stuff. But now I get to do that because Jacinto does that type of stuff. But with that training, all I had was my only speed work I ever got, other than maybe once a month I got to do 500, 500s or 400 repeats. Um, it was always five by 3K. And I understood the point of it, but it was just like, after a while, I was like, oh, this is so boring. This is just 3K all the time, five in a row. Um, but then you get used to it. So after a while, it was like, okay, it's just five by three K. Um, even though it's, it's not as fun as a variety of different, like a ladder or like what they call like the Mexican ladder where you go like 200, 300, 400, 500 up to like 2K and then you go back down. Um, those are more fun because you're changing things up, but everything has a purpose. So all right, Robin. So uh, you've been all over the world. I think you've been in uh, you've been in California, Florida, Ireland, Poland, Spain. You've visited all these other countries. Is there one country you all you want you want to travel and visit? Everywhere. I love I love traveling, and I love foreign language. So, I mean, if I had known linguistics was something that you could get a degree in. I'm not sure what I could have done with it with that degree, but you know, I'm an art major and a race walker. So it's, you know, it just kind of goes with the whole territory of having skills that doesn't make money. But <laughs> I um I love learning foreign languages. Uh, I would I I mean my heart is totally European. Um because I just love that you can get on a train and you can travel for about two hours or less and be in a whole different country, just like, you know, in the States, except for the States, we all speak English. It's all pretty much some cultural differences, depending on if you're in the North, South, East, West, but it's kind of the same where it's a total different culture within an hour and a half plane ride or an hour and a half train, um, like completely different language, completely different culture. And I love that. So um, I don't know, I still want to go to, so my mom and I have talked about, we really want to go to Scotland because I'm part Scottish on her side of the, the genetics. Uh, so after we're thinking at the end of the year in 2024 uh, to go to Scotland, um, I'd like to go to Wales because I'm also part Welsh. Um, I'd love to return to the Azores, I had visited the Azores with my mom and dad uh, after A Coruña in 2019 because of my heritage there. Um, I, I, I mean, I want to go all over. I want I still haven't seen Greece. Uh, I still, I would love to go to Australia when it's not cold. <laughs> I haven't been there yet. I'd like to go to New Zealand. Uh, I was actually supposed to be in New Zealand or Australia earlier this year, but because of some obligations, I couldn't go. I mean, if it's, I just love to explore the world and I've seen a lot of the U.S. I, I think there's only maybe three more states I haven't been to, like Montana. I would love to go to Montana. That's been on my list for a really long time. I hear it's gorgeous. So I'd love to go there. Um, but 
And then someday I'd love to make, I feel like Spain is like where I belong because the lifestyle just fits. It just meshes. So where everywhere else I've been, people like to train by like between 6 30, 8 a.m. And I like to do that sometimes too. But in Spain, you don't start training unless it's hot, like during the summer, you don't start training until around 9 30 to 11 a.m. And that's pretty much the same here. And then because I'm like a morning and a night owl, but I'm the artist in me is more awake at night. And in Spain, like they're having dinner at like 11 p.m. And so then that's why they're starting their days around 9.30 a.m. So I just feel like, oh, yeah, it just naturally works. And then the food is just amazing. Uh, so I still hope to one day um, uh, maybe maybe someday I can make it a home. <laughs> Things are getting harder, though. You know, becoming an expat's harder to do, especially as an American. <laughs> All right, Robin, thanks for hopping on. Uh, we wish you well, and hopefully we'll see you in uh, Budapest for the, uh, World, for the World Track and Field Championships this August, right? Yeah, uh, hoping so. We'll see how it goes. Um, there's still some issues that we're trying to resolve with the um, What else is new? Huh? What else is new? I know. In my life, yeah. Uh, but that's why I'm here in Dublin, because I messed up on my visa. So I had to leave the Shenzhen area, probably mutilating that word, um, Shenzhen, for nine days so that I have nine days so that I can be in Budapest. Uh, the focus is probably going to be on the 20K. Uh, but hopefully I get to be there and um, we'll see. Like, I have whole different goals now. Uh I'm not I'm not as enamored by some of the typical things that uh maybe track athletes are. I'm I'm kind of doing this for a different reason. So <laughs> um but we'll see. I'd like to it's a beautiful place, Budapest. There's I didn't get to see enough of it last year, so um, I'm really hoping to return. <laughs>